famous. How are you doing? Look at you. Oh, actually fail, you know, and it releases a protein, you know, deficiency, and it attacks the muscles, you know, which, you know, the kidneys is an organ, the heart is a muscle, when my kidneys went down, I hope that no one has to ever, you know, go through that, but when my kidneys went down, it was like being in the desert for 14 days with no water, which it ultimately led to two heart attacks, which put me down. And my heart stopped twice, and God brought me back. So I'm very, very thankful for that. We have a picture of, of how he looked in ICU. And we'll show that. Uh, but you're here today. They did not take you off the ventilator and everything because you had your family. Yes, the doctors actually wrote me off. They actually wrote me off. And you know, when you're inside of a comatose stage, the last thing to go is your hearing. And I'm listening to everything that was stated. Yes, that's why when I woke up, I woke up with an attitude. Because I heard everything that they were saying. Exactly. What made you It's a way of life down in Miami, Piran, Florida, you know, and um, it was an outlet. A lot of people call it violence. This is an alternative towards violence because what we did, we created a passage for these individuals to travel through. And we've sent a lot of guys pro, they're doing a lot of things with their lives, you know, and it's, very, it's been very, very beneficial, you know. Um, I can also safely say this, when you look at what we've done, you know, through just being different, we've revolutionized the way that individuals look at extreme reality. We've gotten corporate America to take the trade in their suits and ties for baseball hats and tennis shoes because they say Wrangling Brothers and Bottom Bottom and Bailey Circus is the greatest show on earth. I have to beg the difference. BYB, Backyard Brawls Extreme Fighting Series is the greatest show on earth. We prove it every time we perform. You need to take a look at these shoes. I've never seen awesome shoes like this. Yes. Actually, you know, I've done I've done a lot. You know, we're doing a lot. I've worked with law enforcement, I've worked with kids, I've worked in group home settings and so forth. I've always been giving back, you know, and we're still doing it to this day. You know, and I just want to say that when you look at us, we're pillars of strength. And when you look at, you know, being in a position on the internet or in movies, you know, that's a position of influence. You know, and it's all about positive change. And God brought me back for a reason, you know, and I intend to make America a better place. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
looking at this story and certainly when it came to my, uh, you know, to my desk, I thought that was quite amazing that uh, it was loosely based on the early formations of Europe and the fact that, uh, you know, the, uh, the first two films were quite uh, iconic in their own right, meaning they didn't resemble any other action uh, films. Uh, and so I was excited about that, you know, going to this film. And so uh, I, I, I've known Matthew Vaughn for quite a bit of time and I uh, wanted to work with him. New York Day for an awesome show. Uh, our first movie we're talking about is The Kingsman, coming out February 14th. Day. We have the director of the movie, Matthew Vaughn, here to come and tell us about it. Welcome, Matthew. It's so nice to be chatting with you. Now you're about you're about halfway through editing right now too. You're you're in the weeds on it. You're living the Kingsman life. Uh, yeah, living and dying. <laughs> now this movie is really cool because obviously we know the first two Kingsman movies, but this is different. This is an origin story. So why did you want to you know press pause right now and tell a, a different Kingsman story at this point? I had an itch to try and do. I, I think it's important as a director or any type of artist to keep pushing your boundaries and not try and repeat yourself too many times as easy as it could, could have been. And um, I, I, it's going to sound pretentious and we're never going to win an Oscar or anything like that, but I was watching a lot of the Oscar movies and I just thought I'd never want to watch any of these films again. Um, uh, you know, they're good, but they're not repeatable <laughs> watching. Um, but when I was a kid, you know, Lawrence of Arabia, French Connection, Dr. Zhivago, you put them on, you want to watch them again. So I thought, let's go back in time and um, do a love letter to the movies I grew up on. Today, you brought a couple of special guests who mm -hmm. we're going to welcome out on stage right now. So first up, we have Jimon Hansu as Shola, <laughs> Harris Dickinson as Conrad, and last but not least, playing the Duke of Oxford himself, Rafe Fiennes. This is actually your first Comic-Con ever, too, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Let's give him a big welcome. Now, Rafe, I want to start with you. Talk to us a little bit. What attracted you to wanting to come on board a Kingsman origin story, this, this epic movie that uh, Matthew's been putting together? You? Okay. Yeah? Uh, well, I enjoyed the first King Kingsman films, and um, very much... Um, respected the, uh, the clever balance of uh, relationship and action that I think Matthew established. I mean, the relationship between Colin Firth's character and Taron Egerton. And I thought it was an unusual and original spin on the British spy theme. Um, and I was flattered and delighted when Matthew proposed this prequel to the story. And... Uh, I've had a wonderful time working with Harris and Diamond, and uh, I hope that uh, when you see the film that you, I think you will see there's a, a richness to the, the beginnings of how the Kingsman Intelligence Agency started. There's a line your character says in the movie where reputation is what people think of you and character is what you are. And that seems to be kind of the crux and heart of this relationship. Talk a little bit about you know, how they're kind of differing opinions on war and, and their role in the society as gentlemen makes the heart of the movie. Well, without giving away too much, um, a, a, a tragedy has happened to the family which has given my character, the Duke of Oxford, a particular perspective about warfare. He, he's essentially a, a pacifist. And his son, um, Conrad, grows up, of course, when England is going to, into the First World War, wanting to, to step up and, and join the army, join the forces, and, and, and honor his nation. And so I think in, in that differing opinion about combat, and, and violence, that, that's, there's a tension. How about for you though, Harris? Because it seems like uh, Conrad is kind of, he doesn't understand where his father's coming from, it doesn't seem. Well, no, it's interesting because he's sort of, he, he's a little bit naive, you know, and he's going through this stage. He's at a point in his life where he's, he's sort of realizing 
what it means to be a man amidst a time where you're sort of being defined by your bravery and being defined by your sort of ability to be able to go off and fight for a cause. And I think he's got this, like, passion that he doesn't quite um, fully know how to fulfil. And then that's the sort of interesting dynamic, you know, because it comes up against his father's pre-existing and perhaps better morality, you know, so... It's interesting. Yeah. Now, Jaiman, your character Shola, he's, he's a former war conrad of the Dukes, but now he's kind of like a bodyguard meets butler for the family, which I imagine, uh, and we've seen this tease in the trailers, means you get a lot of really, really cool action scenes. And now, obviously, the Kingsman movies are known for their really stylized action. But you were saying, uh, when we were talking a little bit before this, the action in this movie is actually pretty different for the films and, and was challenging for you who has this whole stunt fight background. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, uh, I didn't really think going to this film, uh, given the fact that it's a period piece, given the fact that it's also um, the uh, uh, tells the uh, the uh, uh, the history of uh, the early formation of Europe, and uh, and that was quite an inst- interesting uh, as a uh, 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 sort of like, um, uh, base. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 of this story, and I think it's, uh, that was quite uh, amazing. But you know, at the end of the day, I was looking on the film, thinking that it was, this was an, e- an easy uh, uh, approach to action-driven stories, and given the fact that it's a period piece, and uh, also how do we look at uh, uh, this period uh, and uh, imagine the war heroes or so, some of the superheroes of that time? He, he hated taking shot, his top uh, off, was, although uh, you should be uh, proud of what. Is yeah, this. He's this was a very painful film to me. <laughs> say. That's what I was trying to get to. It. And you know, and so every day you come to set and you're with uh, working with Ray Fine, who is uh, you know literally it's like uh, ass- you know assisting a master class in acting. You know, mm. and it's so amazing it was. To me. Yeah. And now, what was amazing about Rafe was it was like having a co-director, which I loved, that sometimes I'd miss something, and Rafe was like these laser beam eyes <laughs> scanning everything behind me, and he'd just nod or whisper something, and it was always um, on point. It was, it was totally on point, and, and it was great. It was a real team effort, this film.